Hello and welcome to another one of my psychology videos. Today we're going to be looking at the positive approach and um, this is from the Educas exam board and it's paper one from past to present. So we'll get straight in, we'll give you a bit of background first. So Martin Seligman, he's, he's the one on the image there, he proposed and introduced the idea that instead of focusing on the negative side of human functioning, that we should look at what actually makes us happy and how we should build upon our own strengths to then increase that happiness. So considering all of the four approaches that we do, they tend to look at the negative side of our mind and, and who we are. Um, whereas this new positive approach, with it being quite, well, the newest approach, it offers us quite a new exp um, perspective on, on the whole idea of human functioning. So this whole sort of approach came about from Martin Seligman, Seligman's book, um, which is there, if you fancy reading it. So structuring an answer, you should spend around five minutes per assumption that I'm going to discuss. So there's a structure you can follow, it's the C structure. So you state what your assumption is, you sort of explain what it's about, how it um, explains happiness and a mixed positivity, and then give an example. So the first assumption is the acknowledgement of free will. So this says that we are in charge of our own actions and emotions. So we have the free will to adapt and change how we behave and think. So Martin Seligman tells us that happiness is not determined by genes or luck and that we create that for ourselves. So our own sense of happiness comes as a result of recognising our own strengths and virtues. And then we make the free will choice to develop these to make our lives better and minimalise negativity. So I might find that one of my strengths is drawing. So I might spend more time, maybe an hour a night, practising my drawing, doing something that makes me feel good within myself and is a nice little routine which makes me feel confident and sort of content with what I'm doing. There's also here a statistic that 40% of the variance in happiness is due to that intentional activity. So us choosing to do things that make us feel good about ourselves. And then Dina and Seligman also found that students who made the free will choice to invest time in relationships with friends and family were happier. So the top 10% of students who were the happiest out of all these students um, that were reviewed all shared that same characteristic of commitment. So it, it also, from all these studies around happiness, there's also been found to have been a negative correlation between happiness and depression. So as we increase our happiness, the likelihood of us becoming depressed is decreased. Um, so this whole thing is sort of, this assumption is just acknowledging that we choose to be happy we we choose to do things that boost our happiness and obviously on this little um photo i've put on here there's a few different examples of of how we can achieve that full happiness so having a purpose in life knowing we, what we want to do but then also pushing ourselves to do more because we don't just want to be content we want to feel like we've lived a life worth living so Moving on to the next assumption, we have authenticity of goodness and excellence. So this is saying that feelings of happiness are just as natural and authentic as our negative emotions. So the positive aspects of humans can be studied and researched scientifically. So we should focus on the positive mind rather than the negative mind, because linking back to that study of and the correlation between happiness and depression, if we focus on the positive mind and learn how to build up a positive mind, then we're more likely not going to have as much negativity and have that negative mind. So here Seligman um, came up with his signature strengths. So if you focus on these, it can encourage those feelings of goodness and, and excellence. So these traits can be developed and used to help protect individuals from future mental health problems. So kindness, humour and love of learning. So this sort of means that we cannot take life so seriously, but, but we can be kind to other people and that and then they can be kind back to us and we can have a laugh and 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 feel happy. 
And if we love learning, then, then we're always striving for more. We always want to learn more and we feel good within ourselves knowing that we're putting a lot of time into trying to develop who we are. So here there's the famous Martin Seligman quote for you to have a read of. And then I've also put some of the other um, strengths to consider um, that Martin Seligman suggested. So the next assumption is focus on the good life. So if we focus on developing the strengths I've just discussed, we can achieve the good life. So Seligman proposes we have three stages or types of life that we can pursue to achieve that maximum level of happiness. So we, the sort of foundation level is the pre pleasant life. And then most people, if we develop these strengths, achieve the good life. And then we have the meaningful life. So here I've kind of detailed each one specifically. So the pleasant life is maximising emotions and remaining content with what you're doing in life. Whereas the good life says that happiness comes from pursuing the activities that absorb and engage us. So Seligman proposes three elements needed to achieve this good life. So if we have positive connections, we love and we trust people that links to the acknowledgement of free will. So putting time and effort into, into them levels of commitment. And then we have positive individual traits. So having your morals, having the right morals and having the courage to advance who you are and work on some of those traits you feel like need to be developed a bit more. And then you have your life regulation qualities. So this is controlling your behaviour, being able to sort of sit down, take a minute and reflect. And then also accomplishing goals. So if you set yourself a goal for, and, and you manage to achieve that, then you'll get a, an incredible sense of happiness from that. So coming up to A-levels, you might think, oh, this time next week, I want to be really confident on the positive assumptions. So I'm going to spend half an hour each day going over reviewing testing myself doing some exam questions and then by next week you can sit and and test yourself and if you manage to remember most of it then you can feel that sense of happiness obviously some things you might forget and that's okay that allows you to identify what you need to work on so overall we've discussed the three different assumptions they all kind of follow on and link in with each other and um, so it's quite a nice um description question to write about them your paragraphs can flow quite nicely so that's the end of the video um i've discussed the acknowledgement of free will the authenticity of goodness and excellence and achieving the good life so i uh, any sort of sources that i've used to create these slideshows I, i'll post the link in the the comments below let me know if you'd like me to cover anything else in particular and thank you for listening and watching.